Thank you all so much for joining us now in person and for all our viewers online. After we sing this next song, Watch Ye Saints, please stay tuned for the children's message afterwards. for story time as we read The Marked Man. And please, share this with your friends so that they can listen too. The, fruit of the, spirit is not a coconut. Fruit of the, spirit is not the Marked Man. Cain was terrified at what he had done. As he saw his brother's body collapse upon the ground, he wondered what had happened, for he had never seen a man die before. Then, as the awful truth dawned upon him that Abel was dead, dead like that lamb on the altar which had been the cause of all the trouble, his anger turned to fear and remorse. He couldn't go back home, not now. He couldn't face mother and father, not after doing this dreadful thing, nor could he face his brothers and sisters, for they would be angry with him and perhaps would want to kill him as he had killed Abel. He would have to run away as far as he could go and never come back. That is what sin does. It separates loved ones, wrecks happiness, drives 
derives peace from the mind and joy from the heart. As Cain fled from the scene, he heard God calling to him, Where is Abel, thy brother? I know not, said Cain, as though he could deceive God. Then insolently, Am I my brother's keeper? What hast thou done, said God? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Of course God knew all the time what had happened. Nothing is hid from him. He had witnessed the dreadful deed. He had seen Abel's blood upon the ground, and it cried for justice. Indeed, in the silence and helplessness of death, Abel cried louder than if he had been alive, that something be done about this great wrong. Cain had broken the sixth commandment of God's holy law. Thou shalt not kill. But by his pride, his jealousy, his anger, his selfishness, his lying, he had broken all the other nine as well. He had to be punished, but how? And now art thou cursed from the earth, said God. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. In his mercy, God did not take Cain's life, but sent him away from his home and from all who had been so dear to him, just as he had sent Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden when they had sinned against him. The lad was to be a fugitive, forever running for his life, a vagabond, a tramp who never dared settle down. My punishment is greater than I can bear, cried Cain, as he realized what his sin had cost him. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in this earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. Poor Cain pictured himself as forever living in constant fear of his life, always fleeing farther and farther from the home to which he could never return. Out of pity for this youth who had been so dear to him from babyhood, God set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding should kill him. Just what this mark was, the Bible does not say. It may well have been a change in his face that sin, remorse, and worry always bring. Whatever it was, from this moment on, he was a different man, the first marked man in history. Marked, not that he might be caught and punished, but marked by his punishment that he might be spared. The mark did something else. It reminded Cain, his wife, his children, and all who should ever meet him, how awful are the results of sin. It it was a warning to all never to follow that evil course which had brought so much sorrow upon himself and his loved ones. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Did you ever stop to think what that meant to Adam and Eve? In one brief day, they lost two sons. Abel was dead and Cain, their firstborn, on whom they had depended so much, and on whom they had pinned their hopes for the future, was an outcast, hurrying toward the unknown lands, toward the east for fear of his life. What a dark day that must have been, not since that awful night when they had taken their last look at Eden and seen the angel with the flaming sword barring their return, had they felt such utter loneliness and despair. Well might they have wondered whether life was worth living, and what was the use of hoping any more. Yet hope came again in their poor, sad hearts. And as so often happens, it came in the form of a baby. For it was at this very time that Eve had another little boy. The Bible says, And she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. So they started again, believing and hoping that this might be the baby through whom the promised seed would come. And this time, though they did not know it, they were right. Thank you for watching Erin and Elsie, Samora and Ariana, Clifford and Sean. Share this with your friends so that they can listen too. Bye-bye.
Hello guys, this is Ralph, your host of the Bible and the Newspaper Podcast. If you're living in the United States of America or Canada and would like to subscribe to the podcast, just text the word podcast to the number 833-330-5310. Again, text the word podcast to 8 833- Three 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 zero five three one zero. The Bible and the Newspaper Podcast seeks to offer you space for thought. And in that space for thought, we will draw illustrations of the teaching of God's Word from global news headlines. So join me on the next episode of The Bible and the Newspaper by texting podcast to 833-330-5310. He's outlined in scripture. Not only has he given us a, a blueprint of the history of the world, he has given us a look into the future. He has told us what to expect in these days and age, in this day and time. Grace Fellowship invites you to join us Sabbath mornings online and now in person, where social distancing measures are in place. Come join us in worship. For- You're, You're invited. invited. We cordially invite you to join some of Grace's finest Bible students, Bianca and Professor George Ogoki, Sunday night through through Thursday night at 9 p.m. in God's Lab on Facebook and on YouTube, and each Saturday at 9.30 as we gather on Zoom to encourage one another through the study of the Bible. And tune in at 10.45 a.m. for the Grace Fellowship Kids eCampus program. At Grace, we believe the Bible is true and that it tells us...
music makes it sound like something big is going to happen. <laughs> it makes it me feel important. <laughs> yeah. But we welcome you to our service. We are thankful that we are here in 2021. If somebody told me several years ago that I would see 2021, I'd have told them they, they're on something. Just yesterday, a friend of ours visited, <coughs> and he came with his new car, uh, a Tesla. And he demonstrated how he moves the car with his cell phone. And when I was a young man, that was the stuff of science fiction. And so here I was standing a little shy of a couple of months or 50 years of age, watching a car being moved from a cell phone. And my son, to him this was par for the course. For me, it was something that we saw in the movies. It shows us how far we have come in terms of technology, but when you look at the human race, mankind, the story is not as pleasing. And so the first Sabbath of 2021, like most of you, I assume, and you are setting out your priorities for, for the year. If you had made a resolution to diet, your diet began yesterday. Mine is beginning Monday. If you set your goals for your occupation, your profession, or your career, or your home, your financial goals, they should be currently in play. But I think we need to pause for a moment and ask ourselves a fundamental question. And the question is, how do we really feel about God? How do we really feel about God? Now, here at Grace Fellowship, for those of you that are joining us for the first time online and in person, we've been going through the book of Revelation and we will continue to go through the book of Revelation for as long as it takes to, for us to get through the book of Revelation. But there are fundamental, vital, important lessons that we must draw from the book of Revelation in the year 2021. In fact, we are encouraged that the two books in the Bible that we must study more than any other books in the Bible, not that we must neglect the study of the other books, but emphasize our study on these two books are the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. Because whether you like it or not, no matter how successful you might be, how things, no, no matter how good things might be for you now, we are living on the cusp of the end of time as we know it. When you have a Tesla, a Tesla remote control thermostats, televisions, phones, iPhone, iWatch, i12 Pro, iPads, when you can talk to your televisions and speak to a lady called Alexa and talk to Siri and have Siri talk back to you in any amount of accents you want, when you in that age you feel that you've reached the epitome of success and happiness and we sometimes believe that heaven is here on earth. And let me say to you folks, that is the greatest danger that we face as Christians. There's a movement across the world. They want us to believe that this is heaven on earth. They want us to believe that the 5,000 square foot mansion is your heaven. They want us to believe and to be secure in the stock exchange and in Bitcoin. They want us to pursue every avenue of raising money. In fact, the priority of any young man in, and woman in this, in, in, in this building and online is to be financially independent, financially secure. 
Am I correct? We're chasing the what? The dollar. People leave work for 50 cents more an hour. We want to know what the benefits are. And we can be lulled, seduced, deceived into thinking that what we can achieve here on earth is heaven. The pursuit of happiness. And let me tell you folks, happiness is elusive. It's a vapor. <laughs> because when you think you're happy, you see other people who are happier than you. When you think you've arrived, you see other folks who arrived and have departed to another level. And so you're constantly chasing your tail. I watch my dog try to catch his tail. And when he thinks he got it, he moves and it slips. Eventually, he just lies down. He almost gives up. But the human race hasn't given up just yet. And so this morning I'm going to depart. I will, we're talking about the, the seals of, of, of Revelation 5, 6, uh, 7. We were talking about them. And I want to just pause for a moment and, and take you to another level. Just slightly, a slight shift. The message for the new year. The message for the new year. It's the mind. It's the mind. It's your mind. I've watched a number of videos from people I know and people I don't know talking about 2021 of setting your goals, forgetting that which is behind you and focusing on that which is ahead of you, being focused and you're getting your mind right. I think you've heard that expression, get your mind right. And I want to say to you folks, on the cusp of 2021, it's your mind that is at play. It's your mind that is the subject, object, and target of the devil's deception and seduction. It is your mind. There is more behind my, my frontal, my skull, than, there's more in my skull than just brain. You, are, you, are you following me? My frontal lobe takes in information, makes decisions. My middle brain is the action center. What I've decided plays into action. My medulla connects my brain to my body. Oh, folks, you're not with me here. My medulla connects my brain to my body. My, it connects what I've decided in my frontal lobe, what I've decided to act upon in the middle brain, connects it to my body. So it puts what I'm thinking into action. So my mind is the composite of everything I've seen, smelt, tasted, Touched, experienced, pain, joy, laughter, sorrow, success, failure. Everything that makes you is in your mind. And you know something? Your mind affects your body. You talk about hypochondriacs, people who think they're sick and become sick. We talk about positive thinking. Have you heard the power of positive thinking? They just think positive thoughts and positive things will happen. And I see why the Lord wants to change my body when he comes. Because a lot of my body's ailments and defects are caused by my mind. It's in the mind. That is the prize. Now, when I was young, we sang a Sabbath school song, Be careful little eyes, what you see. Or be careful little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful little eyes, what you see. Did you know that Everything you see is etched on your mind. You don't have a problem with remembering. You have a problem with recalling. But every single thing you've seen in your life has been burned into the flesh of your brain. Everything you've smelt, everything you've touched, every experience you've ever gone through has been stored in your mind. And have you ever got 
this phenomena where you smell something and then it brings a thought to mind? The other day I was listening to uh, Yu Masekela. And he plays, I forget the name of the song, but the moment I heard one of his, one of his hits, the moment I heard it, I began to smell the sights, the smells, and I began to feel the, the aura of my home country. In fact, coming to mind was when I used to buy corn on the street corner. Huh? Uh, it's wonder. You know this, eh? That song invoked a memory. Now, I want to ask you a question. If God is looking down upon you and is looking into your mind, what is he seeing? What is he seeing? The devil has you thinking that you can control what you take in. Hmm? Many of us say that I can handle anything. He has you believing that you, as a human being, can control what you take in. That you can take in everything. I've heard this before. Pastor, I can go, I can drink anything, see anything, be in any situation. It doesn't quite affect me. And I want to tell you folks, that is a deception. And from time to time, we come to the realization that we're under attack. From the day you were born, Daniel, from the day you were born, from the day your son is born, the devil is attacking his mind. But why the mind? And do you know that the devil's attacks are not physical? He doesn't quite grab you by the collar of your shirt or fist you in the face or slap you in the throat or upside the head. He doesn't quite do that. His attacks are never physical. His attacks are mental. Turn with me to Revelation, the 12th chapter. I want to show you something here. Revelation 12 gives a description. Remember, we talked about this. Those of you that have been following the series, we talk about the great controversy. It began in heaven. It began in heaven. Huh? Where did the first war begin? The first war began in heaven. Nobody would think that heaven, the place I want to go, was the place of the first war. But it was there in heaven. But I do know that the devil was defeated in heaven and he was kicked out of heaven and kicked where to? To earth. And he's a sore loser. After getting his you-know-what whipped in heaven, he got down here and he said, you know what? I haven't quite lost Things were rigged against me in heaven. <laughs> Things were rigged against me in heaven. There was a conspiracy to outdo me in heaven. So I'm going to continue my war here on earth. But Revelation 12, 9 tells you what his method is. Look what it says. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was thrown down the age, thrown down the age old serpent, who is called the devil, and Satan. He who continually, what? Deceives and what? Seduces the entire inhabited world. He continually deceives and seduces. Do you know that many of the decisions or the consequences of the decisions you've made probably started with a deception and a seduction? So he comes here on earth. Turn with me to Genesis 27. He, he, brought, he brought this battle, Genesis 2, sorry. He brought this battle down to earth. 
And I want to show you something about the mind. I want to show you in the language. Don't read the Bible in 2021 without an inquisitive mind. So we know what happened in Genesis 2. I'm going to concentrate on verse 17. Eve is having a, a, a discussion with the, with the devil there in Eden at the tree. And you know that Eden is in the Middle East. Huh? Eden is in the Middle East. The four rivers that you see up there in verse 13 through to verse 16, those four rivers are basically in the Middle East, Iran, Iraq, uh, Syria, the Middle East. That, that, that's where Eden was. Eden was in the Middle East. And did you know that when God wants to get the attention of the world, he gets the attention on the stage of the Middle East? I want you to watch the news. If anything happens in the Middle East, the entire world, Russia, China, America, Britain, everybody run to help. If something happened in the four, one of the four corners of dark Africa, they just report it in the news. If something happens in the Middle East, they send envoys. When God wants to get the attention of the world, he gets the attention of the world by staging an event in the Middle East. But that's, that's another sermon for another time. <laughs> Genesis 2.17 He says here, yeah, let's read verse 60 And the Lord commanded the man saying You may freely eat the fruit from every tree of the garden But only from the tree of what? Of knowledge Knowledge is what? Recognition in the mind huh? Of that tree, don't eat Otherwise, on the day that you eat from it, you shall most certainly die because of your disobedience. Ah, but go to, Rebel, to, 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 to Genesis, the third chapter. Eve is having a discussion with the devil. Eve is having a discussion with the devil. And the serpent was more, let's start, let's, start, let's start from verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty, more subtle, more skilled in deceit than any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent, and the serpent said to the woman, Can it really be that God has said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? What is, he, what is the devil appealing to here? What is the devil to? He's appealing to the mind, right? He's saying to Eve, hey Eve, did, did God really say that you can't eat of all the trees? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, except, except, except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God said, he shall not eat from it, nor touch it, otherwise you shall die. So her mind is all right. She's recollecting the knowledge fine, right? God said, she added, don't touch, but... She recorded it, right? The mind. The mind. Now I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Follow me. Stay, stick with me closely. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. For God knows, for God, know, for God knows that on the day you eat from, from the, on, that on the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. That is, you will have greater awareness. And you'll be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. Why did Eve need to know evil when she was living in the good? Hey, I don't want you to. The only way you're going to live life completely, Sibanda, is if you do something that makes you sick. But I'm healthy. Why do I want to be sick? Hey, you will only see clearly once you lit up that weed. But you saw when you are seeing. How much more clear, how much more clearly do you want to see? Lord have mercy. Hey, Eve, you know good, but if you eat, you know evil. Human beings. And when the woman saw, oh, this is my text right here. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she saw, right? What did she use to see? Aha! 
and that it was delightful to look at, and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful. She took some of its fruit and ate it, and she also gave some to her husband with her, and he ate. I want you to notice something, folks. What are the channels to the mind? The eyes and touch, your senses, your taste. Remember, this guy is skillful. You know, many of us believe that we can handle sin. But you know that sin is older than you? You realize that sin has far more experience than you'll ever have. Sin is as old as the world itself. And here your teenage self, your 50-year-old self thinks you can handle sin. The devil has had 6,000 years head start. I can't be that active, huh? No, you're okay. 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 Now I want to ask you a question. The eyes, the touch, the taste, Sibanda. But what was the most critical th thing Eve did in verse 6? Can anybody tell me? Can anybody tell me what was the most critical thing Eve did in verse 6? Huh? She passed it on? Good answer, but not the one I'm looking for. Ha, ha, okay, she, yeah? she saw, good answer, but the wrong one. She ate, good answer, but the wrong one. She, she, aha, she decided to eat. Looking at the, the fruit, did not constitute disobedience. Touching the fruit perhaps did not constitute disobedience, but she decided to disobey. And a lot of what we are going through now in life is a direct result of what we have decided to do. You decided to get drunk. You decided to get high. Don't tell me you don't know what happened. You decided. That bottle of alcohol or that can didn't just levitate and pour itself into your mouth and your mouth just opened automatically and then it poured and then you automatically just... You decided to do this. You decided to commit adultery. You decided to go to lie on a bed that was not the, your, your wedding bed. You decided... And many of us will say, well, well I, I can't help it. You can't help it. You decided. What got you to decide? And many of us don't appreciate this one fact, that the situation we find ourselves right now in life is because we decided and made decisions. The most powerful thing ever entrusted to human beings is the power of decision. I'm going somewhere. Now, the angel of Re in Revelation 6, or the angel of Revelation 7, turn with me there. Ooh, please turn with me there. I'm, I, I'm not going to take too long today. I want you all to go and have a happy new year. 
with your families. I know that you want me to be quiet quickly. The New Year dishes are still there. Revelation 6. Revelation 6. At the end of the sixth seal, the trouble is there. People are running to and fro. Sibanda, they are wanting the earth to fall. There's some, there's some chaos. Revelation 6, 17 says, For the great day of the wrath and vengeance and retribution has come. And then it asks a fundamental question. There's the question right here, Sibanda. The fundamental question. Who is able to face God and stand before the wrath of the Lamb? Who is able to stand? Who is able to stand? If, the, if God looked down on your mind today, what will he find? And I want to say this, folks, from the decision Eve made, things got worse. We just read in the, saw in the children's story what her two sons did to each other. A decision, right? If you read Genesis 6 verse 5, God got tired of this earth because men's thoughts were evil continually. He had to destroy the earth because our minds were not right. And if you follow in Revelation, there's a ceiling going on. Oh Lord. The angel is on the hunt and is looking to seal. In Revelation 7, he says, don't, don't, don't cause any trouble. Hold back the trouble. Hold back the winds of strife. Because I am looking to seal those who are going to be saved. And what is he sealing? What is being sealed by the angel? Your mind. Your decisions. This frightens me to the core. Because my thoughts are not always upright. The things I think I want to do to somebody who honks at me at the traffic light. Did I tell you before that that's one of my peeves? I'm preaching, I'm in the pulpit. Confession is good for the soul. <laughs> one of my pet peeves, Sibanda, is if I'm at the traffic light and it just turns green. And before I can say jack out of the box, the person behind me honks. Where? Oh. I lose all religion and Christianity. Because once that person honks, I now take off extremely slowly. And if I look in the rearview mirror and you're cussing me out, my body says, just stop the car, dead. Jesus help me. And at that point, the angel is looking to, to seal my mind. <laughs> And I want to say to us as we enter 2021, I want to warn you that we are living at the end of time. This is it. If you doubted that we, the Lord is coming soon, take a look at the world around you. You can't trust anybody. You love has waxed cold, be cold because evil abounds. I read the newspaper every day. It is amazing the things that human minds and humans decide to do. I read just this week of a people at a party not too far away here in Arlington were firing shots, celebratory shots from their guns on New Year's, discharged the weapon and killed a child. And they all, adults, decided to lie to the police as to how the child was killed. I, I read in the newspaper of a young girl who decided to persuade her boyfriend to commit suicide by text. She decided to push him over the edge. Her boyfriend. Somebody that you say, I love you too. Somebody who whom you have a relationship with, you actually goad them to commit suicide, calling them names when they express fear and pushing him, oh, the boy committed suicide. 
Let's look at some of the, the, the big things that we consider big things. Do you know that we went to war a few years ago looking for weapons of mass destruction? Do you remember that war? Do you know that we spent billions and billions of dollars and we haven't found the weapons of mass destruction? even though we decided to and voted to go to war, do you realize how many people lost their lives, innocent people lost their lives in the pursuit of this decided effort to mislead the world? Do you know that some of my close friends, some make up some of the 3,000, the, the make up survived 3,000 U.S. soldiers were lost during the war in Iraq, but there's Hundreds of thousands more who suffer from PTSD, who have debilitations from that war. And that war came because we decided to pursue an agenda that was illegitimate. Our decisions can cost us little. Our decisions can cost us much. But there's a price we, be, we pay for deciding. Now imagine the angel this morning looking into your mind. And the angel is sealing our decision. The angel is searching to seal our decisions. And that's why I asked you a question. The fundamental question of 2021 is what do you really think about God? But I want to ask you an even more serious question. As the angel is flying about Samanda, you know, the Bible is very dramatic. The angel is flying in the midst of heaven. Very dramatic book. I said this week sometime, I don't understand why people want to Netflix and chill. Why aren't we talking about Bible flicks and chill? You know, the Bible got a lot of drama. Soap opera, here. My favorite soap opera, Abraham, Isaac, Hagar, Sarah. That's a, that's a soap opera. David and Bathsheba. Who? That's, that's morning television. The miniseries. Huh? But we, 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 we fill our eyes and minds with, with Netflix when right here there's a lot of drama and God is working things out to teach us a lesson. But what is the angel looking for? What is he looking for? Can anybody tell me what the angel is actually looking for? You're close. A decision for God. Can somebody tell me what this angel is actually looking for? The angel is looking for a relationship that you have with God. Go back to Genesis, the third chapter. Please, go back with me there. Genesis, the third chapter. When Adam and Eve had eaten the fruit, huh? when Adam and Eve had eaten the fruit, what happened? They saw that they were what? They were naked. I'm going to add a word in there that's not in the Bible. They were butt naked. Ah, we're naked. What did they do next? They hid themselves. And what did they do when they, before they hid themselves? They, they, they covered themselves huh? with an apron of what? Fig leaves, right? You know that many a times when we make decisions and have to face the consequences of the decisions we've made, we adopt to cover ourselves the fig with fig leaves of excuses. Uh -uh, I'm going to say it again. Whenever we faced with the consequences of the decisions we make, we normally want to make excuses, and those excuses are fig leaves. They made an apron of fig leaves. I want to ask you a question. If any one of you has worn an apron, what portion of your body is still exposed? Yeah. A few months ago, I went for a colonoscopy. And they gave me a gown to wear. Everything was okay up front. But I kept trying to hold stuff together back here. And many a times when I come to your house or you come to me for counseling and you've done wrong, you give me fig leaves of excuses. All I've got to do is ask you to turn around. And we make these 
fig leaf of excuses. They made the excuses. But what I want to emphasize is that prior to them making the decision to be disobedient, they had a relationship with God. Every evening, them and God sat down. Adam was sharp. He was a smart cat. He, he named the rabbit and the lion. Imagine the kind of conversation him and God had. There were deep conversations. The old lady Ellen White says that they had conversations where God was revealing to them the secrets of creation. And if Adam would wake up today from his grave and look at us who are his children, he'd weep. Because we, we're tiny compared to Adam. You only use, a genius only uses 1% of their brain. A genius uses 1%. <laughs> I'm not a genius. It's insulting. I'm losing less than 1% of all this that's up here. But because of the decision of Adam and Eve, that decision, we have been affected. We have been downgraded. And all the angel is looking for this morning are people who have a relationship with God. Now what about that relationship? Why is it so important? Because the essence of that relationship is love. You can be intelligent. You can be rich. You can be talented, you can be gifted, you can, be, you can have it all, but if you have no love, you're a bunch of noise. Huh? Love was the essence of the relationship between God and Adam and Eve. Love was what was violated, that separated us from God, that separated humanity from God. And you know, folks, until we have a relationship with God, our minds can never be right. Because the moment you chose to be rebellious, you kicked out love. And here's something about the love of God. The love of God, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Eh? No height, no depth can separate us. But there's nothing as important as love as when it's expressed. When somebody knows you and still says, I love you. That's a big deal. My wife needs to get into heaven for only but one thing. That having known me, she still loves me. Knowing me first thing in the morning, knowing my temperament, Knowing my inadequacy. You guys don't know me. She knows me. And when she says to me, I love you, that means something. Because I wouldn't love me if I knew me the way she knows me. And God is looking to establish that relationship of love with us even though he knows our mess. And the only way our minds can be renewed in 2021, I don't care how many self-help books you read. I don't care how many motivational speakers you listen to. The only way we can in 2021 be focused and are headed to glory is if we renew our minds. Be not conformed to this world, but be he renewed, be transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind, meaning establish a relationship with God that has at its essence love. And once you have that love in your life, you think like him. That is why the Apostle Paul says that the mind of Jesus be in you also. You can't reach perfection without love. A relationship without God can never get you to be a perfect human being. And as we enter 2021... My prayer is that we renew our minds. I'd like to say this to everybody here. Life is too short. Life is short. So short that we have to make haste to have a right relationship with Christ. Hey, hey, your mind. Be 
Be careful what you decide. You know why we are so unsettled of, because of, of this COVID-19 pandemic, we are unsettled? It's because COVID-19 challenged our confidence in things. Challenged the satisfaction and the pleasure we derived by going places. People in part of the world are rioting because they cannot go to the pub. Huh? Mind. People here in the United States, there's an anti-mask movement and an anti-virus COVID, COVID pandemic conspiracy movement. The mind has been spoiled. Something is killing people. Do we agree? Whether you call it COVID or the flu, it's killing people. It's touching almost every household. But yet we are still arguing. We're still saying it's a hoax. You're, you've been, you have so polluted your mind that you believe that you have the right to impose yourself on other people. This week I saw a lady being asked to leave a store because she wouldn't wear a mask. And she was, the storekeeper, the manager, was just trying to pursue, tell her, ma'am, you don't have to believe that the mask will stop anything. But for the safety of others, can you wear a mask? And she didn't want to wear a mask. She told the storekeeper she traveled 30 minutes to come do groceries. So you travel 30 whole minutes to come and be belligerent here for wearing a mask for 10 to 20 minutes and you don't want to do it because it's your right not to and you've accepted that it's your right to possibly infect others even though you don't mind being infected. We've made a decision to be selfish. As the father of a home, Again, praying for a, I'm praying for a guy who is, for the daughter of a guy who told me to his face that COVID is a hoax. He called me a name I cannot use here on the pulpit or in private even for wearing a mask. And then his daughter fell sick. Who does he call? The pastor. I know you're a religious man. Yes. My daughter has just been diagnosed with COVID. Oh, really? Can you please pray for her? I was tempted in my mind to say, hold up, dude. You decided. But then I realized the angel is looking to seal the mind. So I said, hey, hey, okay, dude, I'll pray for you. But do you recognize that your daughter took leadership from her dad? You fathers, husbands, You are the covering of your home. You set the pace for your home and your children. You want to be a fool? There are fools watching you. You want to open your home to an attack by the devil? He comes through your decisions. Yet a man, young girl, sick, in the hospital, right here on 380. She's now sick. Daddy told the entire, and you know what the ironic is this year? His wife is a nurse assigned to the COVID unit. I don't, I, I, did, that, did that miss you? His wife is assigned to the COVID unit at the hospital where his daughter, who was following her father's lead, not wearing masks, going to every gathering here and every gathering there, now she's sick. Decisions, believers, decisions. Your mind. If the ceiling is going on now, will the devil seal my mind? Will, will the angel seal my mind in rebellion? 
will the proclamation made at the end of Revelation, let him who is filthy be filthy still. Will that declaration apply to me? The mind, folks, is the prize. The devil knows that if he can jack with your mind, he can jack with your life. I say this to my young, my, 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 my young friends, those of you who have many years ahead of you in life. Be careful. Be careful what you take in with your eyes. Be careful what you take in with your ears. Be careful what you touch. Be careful what you taste. Because those are all windows and entries to your mind. For those of you that are old, you know, you can't teach old, you can't, you can't teach an do old dog new tricks. You can't take an old horse to the river and force it to drink. But let me put a little salt under your tongues. We can only be ready for heaven. God can own us, only trust us with eternity if he is able to establish a relationship with us and that our minds are renewed. It's amazing how many people are, are caught up in pornography. And you know, pornography is a seduction. You, 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 you don't build this addiction immediately. It's a little here and a little there. They even know how to market to you by tracing your searches. And sometimes they they, they send a link that forces you to decide whether you're going to click yes or no. Decisions. Decisions. The other day, I was reading a newspaper and a pop-up ad, a pop-up ad popped up. Do you want to meet married women? in your area, looking for a quick relationship. There was a red button that said no. There was a green, there's, there's a red button that said no, a green button that said yes. I asked myself a question, so who told these people that I'm male and I'm looking to have a relationship with other married people? Nobody told them. They're fishing. So there you are, bored with life. There you are just aimlessly scrolling on the internet and you decide, you decide, not what I said, you decide, let me see what this really means and you click yes. You've opened to your mind a very dark path and avenue. We have to decide who we're going to hang out with in this last day, in this day and time. We've got to decide what we're going to read, Sibanda, what we're going to eat. You've got to decide how you're going to live. You've got to decide, folks, what becomes important in your life. What is important in your life? Is it your career, your money, your investments, your 401k, your houses and land? What is important to you? Because ultimately, I want you to understand that in the great controversy between good and evil, you are the target and the object and the subject of this great controversy. And the control for your mind is the prime objective. Because the devil can get your mind. He's got your body. Now I'm talking to somebody out there who, is, who, who, who hears me and understands that the current situation they are in is because of decisions they've made. And they're saying, Pastor, so I've made the wrong decision, then what? Pastor, I've 
I've smoked all the weed I can smoke. I feel that I can't get over it. Or pastor, I'm, I'm in a bad way in a relationship and I've made some bad decisions. How, how, how do I reverse those decisions? Folks, all you've got to do is tell the Lord that you want to stop right here and now. That you want to, you, 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 you want to renew your mind. But then you have got to take steps to win yourself. You see, if the Lord just rescued you from every mess you find yourself in, you'll never be able to tell, you'll never have borne the cost of recovery that will stop you from going back into that same sin. You know, I tell my son, I'm never ever going to defend you from your bad decisions. I'm not going to help you. If you spilled the milk, don't ask mommy to come and clean it up. You clean it up. If you've decided not to wash the dishes and go to bed, and daddy wakes up at 2 o'clock in the morning and finds the sink full of dishes, daddy's going to wake you up at 2 o'clock in the morning to wash those dishes. Daddy's not going to do it for you. And I'm saying this to those that are in recovery, those that want to get out of the mess they're in. You've got to admit that you've made bad decisions. You've got to trace where these bad decisions ultimately began. And then you've got to reverse everything that got you to in that situation. And many a times, it's your associations and your pastimes. I have a very good friend. We go way back. Way back, like Cadillac seats. Way, way, way back. But I know that when I'm with this friend, I suspend reason. I know when this, we love each other dearly. But I know if I'm with him too often, for too long, I'm going to suspend reason. We know good for each other. So I've made a decision after some scars, Mrs. Sibanda, I've made a decision that that friend, I'm going to cut them off. Not that I hate them or not like them, but for our good and my good, I'm going to separate myself from them. I don't know what it is for you. I don't know what it is. I don't know what your trigger is. But in 2021, you must make the determination to have a relationship with God and go back to the place where you know your decisions are made and ask yourself a fundamental, pure, bred, brash, ugly, confrontational question, what gets me here? What gets me here? Take stock of the decisions that you are making or have made. And ask yourself a fundamental question. If the angel were to this day seal you, will you be sealed for heaven or will you be doomed to hell? And all sometimes it takes Daba is yourself. You know that it, a lot of problems would be solved if we removed self from the equation? So in 2021, as you make your resolutions, I want, to, I want to challenge you. Have you decided to follow Jesus? If you decided to follow Jesus, then there can be no turning back. And you say to the Lord, Lord, I entrust you with my life. Now, listen folks, I know some of these decisions are not easy to make. It's an addiction you can't break. And, 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 and you, it, it may appear that you won't be able to survive if you make a decision to break with your past. You, you probably have to give up friends. You will probably have to give up late night outings. You're probably going to have to change your diet. You're probably going to have to start reading different things. You're probably going to have to basically cancel the subscription to that 900 channel. 
And, and, I, and I know it can be overwhelming and the devil has deceived us and seduced us to the point where we feel that we can't exist except in sin. I want to tell you, folks, this morning, those of you listening to me online and here in the church, in 2021, I pray that you make a decision to follow Christ. I pray that you say, Lord, I want to re-establish my relationship with you because I know that the sealing is taking place. That angel is on the hunt. At the end of the, at the, end of the sixth seal, the Lord comes, the seventh seal, there's an interregnum. And then the 144,000, the sealing. Because when they ask the question in, 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 in Revelation 6, 17, who will be able to stand? The answer is in Revelation 7, verse 4. The 144,000 and those that come after them. That, 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 that numberless number. Those that have been sealed for God. And I want to ask you the question, how do you really feel about God? You know, there are prayers that he has not answered. There's that job that I'll probably never get. There's, there's a decision, my relationship is on the rocks and it probably never be rebuilt. And I've prayed to him over and over to bring us back together again. Or you may be struggling, a divorcee perhaps, and you're looking for another relationship and you, you're saying, Pastor, I've been praying all these years and I don't know if I'll ever find somebody. And you, you, God hasn't come through to, for me. You know, folks, that's when you really know how you feel about God. Because if you think God is an ATM machine, a slot machine, that every time you press in some coins, He gives you what you want, you don't have a relationship with Him. You don't. That relationship is too transactional. You know, the Lord is looking for transformational relationships. He's already paid the price. He elected you before you were even born. He chose you before you were born. All he's asking you to do is to choose him. So it's in the mind. The battle is for your mind. My prayer this morning is that you recognize what the battle is for and say, Lord, I surrender everything to you. I've decided to follow you. Let us pray. Father, your spirit has not bid me to make a call this morning, so I won't. But Father, you're hearing the prayers that are ascending to your throne of grace, both here and online. You know the situations that are out there the situations in everybody's life. It, it could be, there could be an individual out there who, who has backslidden, who have made compromises, Father, to please husband or children. They no longer attend church. They, they feel that they, 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 know they have no need of fellowship, Father, and they are steeped in this backslidden condition and you know father when we are backslidden we have the craftiest of reasons why we have become cynical about your truth there's somebody out there that is covered with the fig leaf of excuses someone struggling with an addiction somebody father who finds themselves in a situation that they require you to remove them from you can own you're the only one who can provide a way out but they, they 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 feel that they have gone so far that their prayers are not being heard there's somebody father who will listen to this message today tomorrow sometime in the future who has just come through a very rough time and they, they are seeking answers and here's the answer. All they must do is decide to follow you. They must abandon the world, put the worldly thinking aside and seek your will from scripture. They must establish a relationship of love with you. 2021 Father has come upon us 
And in 2020, Father, we couldn't celebrate Thanksgiving because of COVID. We couldn't celebrate Christmas because of COVID. We couldn't even usher in the new year because of COVID. Father, we're wearing masks. We are socially distant. And Father, there's a lot of uncertainty and anxiety that is built in our lives and our homes. And Father, we are asking for calm. Please show us that you are in charge. Now there's somebody who is praying a prayer of confession. Or somebody who, as they listen to this message about the angel sealing, and it's the mind, the mind, the mind, and the decisions that we've made, and they realize they've made bad decisions, or they're on the cusp of making a terrible decision, and Father, they are seeking intervention from heaven. I pray that you intervene in a real way. Show them your hand. Father, we want to be settled in a relationship with you. And at the beginning of this year, we're saying, Father, take our lives and let them be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my feet. Take my hands. Take my lips. Take my body and let it all move at the impulse of your love. Father, please hear our prayer this morning. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you.
Father, we want to be translated into heaven, but we have to be on earth for but a while. But until you come in the clouds of heaven, we want to live for you. Father, seal our commitment this morning to establish a relationship with thee. Forgive us of our sins. So when the roll is called up yonder, we'll be there is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen.